Well, hello and welcome back to Matt's Automotive Channel. As you may recall, in one of our previous videos, we addressed a leak from the uh, front crank seal on this car. And uh, what we found were some grooves that were had been dug into the balancer. And so uh, the fix for it, what we tried to do is just, uh, when we pushed in the new uh, crankshaft seals to put it in a little different location, so the seal didn't line up with the grooves that had been worn into the balancer. Well, uh, I've driven this around for a while and found that that uh, approach did not work. We still have a little bit of leak. I ended up putting some uh, UV flu uh, fluorescent uh, dye into the oil to detect where the leak was coming from. And uh, I'll show you here shortly, uh, but it's definitely very obvious that it's coming from that seal. So today we're gonna go ahead and pull the uh, harmonic balancer back off. And we're gonna put on a seal sleeve over the end of the balancer. I went ahead and just ordered it uh, from O'Reilly's. It cost me $9.99, should be here by five today. So um, anyway, we'll give that a shot. We'll leave the uh, same uh, crankshaft seal in there and uh, see if we can just put the sleeve on and, and uh, fix the problem. So um, anyway, let's get started uh, by go ahead and removing that balancer again. All right, I'll spare, spare you the agony of uh, watching me do this procedure again and the balancer off. If you wanna see it, it is in the previous video that I'll link at the end of this video. Um, but again, we're gonna start by removing the coolant tank, which is super easy. You just remove this bolt, this tube, and then pull it out, and uh, the fan too. Just remove the uh, connector there, and there's a couple of uh, fasteners there that tie the harness uh, to the fan. We'll just remove that. And then of course, uh, serpentine belt. All right, now we have the uh, cool, coolant tank off. We have the fan off, and I loosen the bolt and the balancer, and of course we remove the uh, serpentine belt. So last time, um, a bunch of oil came out of here because it was leaking past that keyway. This time it looks pretty dry. So the RTV that we put in there, uh, it held. So we have no leakage through the inner portion of the crank there. All right, it kind of looks like it's getting through the seal right there. There's those two grooves that we noted. It looks like it's leaking past that first one and then coming out to the second one and then passing through there as well. So I think by putting that uh, sleeve on here, that seal sleeve, we should be able to eliminate this issue. At least that's the plan. So we'll give it a shot and see if it works. Now just to show you how effective that UV dye is, um, saw what we were just looking at. I haven't wiped this or anything, but this is looking at it just with regular light, ambient light, and we can't really see where that oil is flowing. But with the UV dye, it's very obvious. All right, we now have our balancer sleeve. This uh, came from O'Reilly's. It's a national oil seal brand. And uh, this is what she looks like. We've got the sleeve here that's ultimately going to get pushed down over the balancer here to cover up these marks and make it a nice smooth surface again. And this here is the install tool. So the way it's going to work is that'll go on there and then we'll put that on and then either tap it down or press it on with the hydraulic press. And uh, the important thing to note here is where the uh, wear marks are on here. This is obviously the damaged part of the balancer that needs to be taken care of with this sleeve. So we got a little lip right down here. So obviously when we push on, it's gonna stop right there. So it'll be about equivalent to here. So you can see that this is going to, the top of this will cover this portion here. However, when we put in the seal into the engine, we put it in a little different position last time so it wouldn't line up with this. So we're gonna to have to make sure that when this is pushed on, that it's gonna match up with where the seal is gonna ride on this balancer here. So to do that, we're gonna measure the depth in which this is gonna get pushed in and where the seal is on the engine side. So let's go do that first. So looking at the uh, end of the crankshaft here, 
Uh, you can see the middle part of the crankshaft where the balancer is going to bottom out. So we want to measure from that distance out to where the seal is here. So let's go ahead and take that measurement first. All right, so we'll use the plunger depth gauge on this caliper here. So about right there, so we'll look at that depth. Okay, so here's the depth that we measured. So basically the end of this balancer here is gonna bottom out on the crankshaft and the seal is gonna be offset this amount here. So if we look at the tip here, it goes a little bit below this ring and that's all we really need. So if we pound this on all the way, it's gonna cover up that. So basically as long as this little groove here is covered, we're good to go. So we can go ahead and pound that on all the way. Now, one of the other things that is in the instructions that they want you to do before installing this is measure the diameter of this. And uh, looks like we're at about 1.878 uh, inches. And um, I did do this earlier and it's, it is perfectly round and it's not conical shaped or anything, so we're good there. So now let's go ahead and measure the inside, inner diameter of this sleeve. And you can see that there is 1.875. So basically about three or four thousandths difference. So the inner diameter of this is a few thousandths smaller than that. So this should expand as we uh, tap it on. And the other thing they want you to do is use a non-hardening non -hardening sealant um, on this surface before pounding the sleeve on. All right, the stuff that I'm gonna use for the sealant is this uh, pipe joint compound. It's um, a Teflon-based type and uh, it never really hardens up. And uh, it's used for uh, threads on water type connections that sort of thing. So this should work great for this particular application. So I'm going to put a little thin coat of this onto the balancer here and then just smear it around ever so lightly. Okay. All right, I'm gonna try tapping this on before uh, attempting to use the press. Hopefully this will work just fine. So I'll basically set it on there. It's good that this has a little chamfered edge here on the balancer, so it starts real well. So the key here is just gonna be keeping it flat. And I'll put a block of wood over that. And then uh, let's get started here first. So I've got it going on nice and flat. sound change which means it's bottomed out and there we go and we've got the little uh, ridge that was cut into the balance here is now covered so I'll get all this excess off this joint compound and I think we can go ahead and install it back onto the vehicle and again we're going to need to use a little bit of RTV right here in this uh, keyway Now, if you're curious like I am, um, you'd like to know how much this has increased the overall diameter. So let's measure it here real quick. And it looks like we're at 1.898 and before we were at 1.878. So it looks like the overall diameter is about 20 thousandths more than the original. Not bad, that should work just fine. Another thing to note, the flange portion of this sleeve does not come off. Um, these type of sleeves that go on axles and I think uh, 
pinions and that sort of thing. Uh, oftentimes we'll have a little cut here so you can actually pull off the flange. It's not necessary in this case and so they've made no attempt to make this removable. So that flange portion will just stay on there like so. Now before reinstalling it I went ahead and cleaned up the inside of this uh, where the keyway is. So put a little bit of oil on the outside here. So it slides into the uh, seal without any friction significantly reduced friction anyway and then uh, use a little bit of RTV right here on the end of the keyway here to prevent oil leakage through that spot just a little dab will do you okay that should do it now let's go ahead and get her reinstalled Now when you install these, you always want to use an installer tool like this and not the uh, crank bolt because it won't go in far enough and even if you can catch a, a few threads, it will just be a few and you could potentially strip the thing out. So, anyway, we can see the new seal going in here. And we can definitely see that it's going to make contact. It seals just fine. Okay, now let's go ahead and remove the installer tool. Now we can reinstall the balancer nut here, or the bolt, balancer bolt, and then torque that down to spec. Okay, we've got it all torqued back in. The uh, torque spec on that uh, bolt is 118 pound feet. If you want to see all the particulars on how to do it and the tools needed, uh, please check out the previous video of uh, taking care of this balancer seal, and I have all that information there. Okay, all that is left is installing the uh, coolant tank, the radiator fan, and the serpentine belt. And uh, then I'm going to go ahead and run this scene and we won't know whether we really have the leak fixed until the next day. It's a very slow leak and um, prior to doing this job, um, I would have to drive it, get the engine up to full temperature so that it gets really thin, uh, then park it, leave it overnight, and then you just barely see a little bit of oil leaking there. So um, we may even need to wait uh, a few days if we uh, still have a leak, but it's just smaller. We, we may not see it for a few days or maybe even a week. So anyway. Uh, we'll keep our eye on it and uh, see if this was a success or not. So anyway, I'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.